So the way that you do that, if you're working in the corporate environment, what's worked really well for me, there's a couple of things that, are, that have been phenomenal. Um, number one, yesterday when Rick Roth was talking about don't take an order that you can't afford to screw up. I think that was a tremendously valuable piece of advice. I see people going, I want to do work for Nike. I want to you know, go out to do Walmart and this kind of stuff. And it's like, you're not prepared for that. You're in a different situation. So if you want to talk about growth, I started my first company when I was 19. Next week, on July 17th, it will be 47 years, and it's still running as a, as a company. I've been a serial entrepreneur since I was seven years old, right? The way I got into this business is I screen printed the labels for the surfboards that I was making at 14. I got tired of hand drawing them on rice paper, so I started screen printing them. And then, of course, my friend said, well, why don't you, hey, print your logo on my shirt? And boom, I'm in the t-shirt business, right? Funny how that happens. So I've, I've been in this business all the time, and I'm a very analytic person. Most of you who have listened to any of the, my, my podcasts or anything like that, you'll know that I kind of look deeper into these issues. So as a result of that, I tend to th take things apart. And um, early on, I changed my major from engineering to basically printing engineering, which is the science of how you get ink from something onto something else, right? It could be paper, it could be plastic, ceramic, or whatever. And I took all my elective classes in classes I knew I would need, like math and statistics and organic chemistry. I mean, what kind of a person takes organic chemistry as a, an elective? <laughs> and I was driven, right, driven, and it served me well. When I got out and I started doing business, the technique that I used was I looked for images that would be really, really great on shirts, like Coca-Cola, right? And they had these, you've probably seen them from the old Life magazines, there's like a Santa Claus with a Coke tray, iconic images. And this is when it was expensive to do color separations, right? We were like one of the only people in the country that was doing this in 1977, 78. So I separated some of these designs and I submitted them to Coca-Cola knowing full well that they were gonna turn them out, right? And I did it for Country Tide Lemonade and Miller Brewing and you know some pretty big brands. And I got a 5,000 shirt order out of Coca-Cola. White ink on a red shirt, but what the hell? You know, it was, a, it was a step in the door. But the power of it was that I took those images that I did for Coke and that I did for Miller and that I did for Country Time and I would go into my target accounts, which were tiered down. And I said, well, this is what we did for Coke, and this is what we did for Miller, and this is what we did for so-and-so. So it was instant credibility. They connected the dots. I didn't say that I sold it, but I did do it for them, <laughs> right? And there's a, very, there's a very important distinction there. You don't ever want to lie or mislead anybody, and, but that was my marketing approach. And I went from, 200,000 in sales when I graduated from college, because I was working to college, to 4.8 million in 18 months. So that's pretty heavy growth. It was frickin' nuts. You know, and I didn't, I almost put myself out of business because I didn't understand. So that's one way of doing it, is, is to do spec samples for one level above, or comparable to the kind of company that you want to do business with. And in the tech industry, it's really easy because there's so many people at Google and there's so many people at AMD and there's so many people at advanced micro devices and all these different places that if you did a shirt for them, there's no way that they're gonna know in there that, oh, we, we bought it from this vendor. So that's one way of doing it. The other way I do it, and this should be good for you, Mike, is that if you're connected on LinkedIn, you know, I've got about 4,000 connections on LinkedIn. I'm very strategic about who I get connected with. I connect with people that are influencers. I'm looking for people that are connected to other CEOs in certain vertical markets. When I've got a target that I want to go after, I go after the top, right? I go after the CEO, right? And it's the CEO of a company that is somebody that I can talk to that could relate. I could never talk to the CEO of Salesforce.com because Benioff is on a different level. He's a billionaire or you know, Oracle or something like that. I'm not in that sphere. But if it's a hundred million dollar company, no problem. You can easily connect with a CEO at a hundred million dollar company. No, no, no sweat whatsoever. So you identify who the target is that you want and you want to see how many of your connections are also connected to that person. 
right? Or, you know, that are like a second degree connection away. And then what I do is I go out to those connections and I will say, hey, I need a connection to so-and-so. You know, would you make an introduction to me? I've got this really great program that they'd be interested in. And then I go over here and I talk to a different person. And I say, would you introduce me to so-and-so? And over a period of, say, four to six weeks, the CEO of that company will have heard my name three times from three different people. And by the time they connect with me, then it's like, this guy must be something if I'm hearing about him independently from other people. So those two techniques are really powerful for, for getting you in there. You want to go in with a position of authority, and you don't want to be cocky about it, but you want to be, be able to go in and say, I've got something really special to offer. I'm, I do things differently than everybody else. The things that you think that you're doing, I think we can do it better for a number of reasons. If you're in this room and you think that you're in the decorated apparel business, that you're an embroiderer, if you're a t-shirt printer, you're done. There's a freaking million t-shirt printers out there, right? John said it when he said that your t-shirt tells a story. Remember when he said that, right? I own the URL, every t-shirt tells a story. In fact, I'm writing an article right now for Screen Printing Magazine on the t-shirt as media. We live in a time where everything in social media is about expression. And if you tell a story, and especially if you use StoryBrand, right? If you haven't read StoryBrand or connected with it, you know, you can talk to me about it, you can talk to Shelby about it, we're both certified guides. But it's an incredibly powerful tool for clarifying your message and getting people to be able to tell your story. I mean, think about this. Your story or your customer's story is being advocated by the person wearing the shirt. Every person there is, a, is an evangelist for you. And if you use that, you can leverage that brand. It's almost like live printing. It's the same kind of thing. It's experiential. And it, it completely changes the value that you bring to the marketplace.